everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And we're the Streeters. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. It's good to see everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Tonight. Welcome to the RDRV live stream. We got some fun things going on tonight. Ed's doing a glass chat, and we we're do. doing a glass cutting demo. We're going to demo, yeah. And we're we have a lot of great flower. questions. We do. We have some great questions, Barb. And you know what? We are just checking in on our signal. How's everything working for everybody tonight? Because you know we're on the road with Artie this holiday season, and we are celebrating here in the studios of Simplicity in the South. So and we're very grateful that we were able to get everything set up. So we want to send out a shout out to Simplicity in the South. And if you have a chance, go to their website, simplicityinthesouth.com. And I'll type that in. We'll type that in and get it to you. But yeah, so thank you, Simplicity in the South. Thank you for the use of your beautiful studio tonight. And you know, it's just really, it's a good feeling. So thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. And Barb, we got some questions piling up already. I know. Let me put this um, this link in here for y'all. If you want to find out the great things that they do over here at Simplicity in the South, you can get that link later on tonight and check them out. Um, also, we want to send out a um, shout out to Sunshine Glassworks. And thank That's right. Them. Who is sponsor of our show on every Monday night. And we want to thank them for joining us again this year in 2023. For an entire season so thank you guys very much and don't forget when you're shopping for glass sunshine glass has over 1500 colors from all the different manufacturers in the country so don't forget and let them know that you watch barb and ed's channel and that you're shopping there because we told we asked you to we, you <laughs> we didn't to. tell you to we told well go ahead okay tell them all right okay. i'm telling you go okay. ahead <laughs> we have questions coming up okay so barb, let's, let's go, go. Ahead and jump in with the questions um, and if you have a question, just put it in the chat. Put a cue there so we can get to it for you real quick. Uh, Pauline asks, uh, she has a question on doing an old window. She ran into old glass. It was very brittle and broke very easy. Why does this happen? And is, is it the weather or just age does glass age? No, actually, you know, Pauline, what happens is if it's an old window and if it's definitely an old window, the annealing processes of the glass or the cooling processes weren't exactly uh, you know, computerized and everything like they are now. So if you ran into some brittle glass cutting it, it has nothing to do with the temperature, okay? What it has to, everything to do with is the annealing process of the glass. So, you know, and if you're, if you're repairing it, uh, you know, and you do have to cut it, just listen to your cutter because it's going to tell you what's going on. And uh, but it has nothing to do with the temperature, y'all, because we're going to cut some glass tonight and it's relatively chilly because we're outside in the studio. It's actually it, it's quite comfortable. They have made it very comfortable for us and we want to thank them for that. Right, Barb? Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be shivering. Yeah. But it's very nice. But yeah, so we're going to be cutting glass tonight and it's cold and we're going to cut it anyway. Yep, we're going to cut it. Actually, you know what? The low tonight, 17 where we are tonight. Woo! It Crank up the heater and RV in the RV, babe. I have a question that came in, and uh, it was to you, Ed. They made a box. Okay, awesome. And the lid didn't fit when they got uh, finished with it. So they wanted to know what they could do to fix it. Well, um, it's imperative that when you build the box and the lid, okay, that everything comes out square. Now, and if I remember this question right, uh, they were had talked about maybe they were wanting to put a lead, l twisted lead frame around it or something. Here's mm -hmm. my suggestion, and it, and I know that it, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit disheartening, but I think what I would do is take the hinges off of the box, take the box off of the the lid off of the box, and make the box lid square like it's supposed to be and then you won't have that problem. I think adding lead around the outside edge is number one, it's gonna make the lid too heavy so that when you flip the chain over, you're gonna have a lot of extra stress on that chain that doesn't belong there. What I would do is adhere to your pattern when cutting the glass and make sure that 
you know, you really, on a box lid, you only have two corners that are perfectly square. The left side or right side and the front are actually, they're the levers that you open the box with. So, but please make sure if you're going to build boxes, it all has to be square. It's not, it's no different, working with glass is no different than working with uh, wood or anything else. It all has to be cut correctly. So listen to your cutters and make sure that you put that lid on the box together correctly. And it, the lid's not going to fit unless the bottom of the box or the box itself, the box component of the jewelry box is square as well. So take your time, cut the glass correctly and make it so that it works for you. Because I don't have a fix for messing up an out of square lid except to redo it and make it right. That's all. That's what I would do. That's right. That's what I would do. I'd redo it, make it right. And, and actually, now you've learned something. The lid has to be square, just like the box. That's right. That's right. And Thank it, you, it, Yes, no, you know, it's nothing. It's just how it, how it is. It has to be that way. We want to tell Ray, thank you. Thank Ray. you Ray. Thumbs up, buddy. Give thank Ray you for everything. Thumb. Everybody give Ray a big thumbs up tonight for helping us out. Thank you, Ray. We appreciate you. Uh, Jen has a question. Okay, Jen. She wants to make a vase. Do I need to use lead-free solder, and do you have any helpful advice on making a vase? A, a flat vase, I guess? I would say if you're going to, a vase for flowers. Yeah, a flower vase? Um, I would say it would not really matter. Uh -uh. Now, this is my opinion, thinking about it. Thank you, Sean. Oh, Thank Sean. You. Sean Allen. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's that awesome, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Hold on. Thank We're in the you. shop now. Look out. Woo. Thank you, Sean. You thank got you, the Sean. lights going, baby. You are the man. Thank you, Sean. Okay. So, Jen, get back to Jen's question. Okay. Jen, I would think you could use it, make it any way you want to. And I think the secret about that is put a clear glass vase inside of that vase because you're not going to be able to build it watertight. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, basically, you're not with copper foil. You're not or going to be lead, able to build or, you, it, or lead. You're not going to be able to build something that's waterproof or like a fish tank. So what you would want to do is use a vase that you would build the stained glass vase around so that the inside is clear and also will hold water and you won't have to worry about it. And no Unless you're that. going to build stained glass flowers to go in it, which I think would be really awesome and just do a flat front of a vase and then add flowers in it and make it look like it's full of water and hang it. So that's the one idea. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's what, really cool. That that's a great solution. idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. So yeah, it's not gonna. You can use any kind of solder you want on that because you're definitely not gonna be able to make it waterproof. Yeah. Uh, Julie has a question. Okay. How do you make the little decorative solder balls that I have seen on different projects? How do you keep it all from melting together? Okay. Here's the thing. Okay. Now there, there's one book out there on decorative soldering. Well, uh, there might be more. There might be. Uh, yeah, there's really, one really, really good, good one. one. <laughs> so there's one really good uh, decorative soldering book. But the whole key to that, Julie, is uh, take a uh, take put two pieces of glass together, run a bead on it, okay? Then turn your iron down just a little bit each time and work on till you get that ball exactly the way you want it and then mark that temperature. So you'll solder your whole piece and then you'll come back Turn your um, your rheostat down to that other temperature, and it's gonna. Hey, honestly, it's gonna be somewhere in the 400s, in the high 400s for you to decorative solder. Um, it's gonna be below 500, but it's gonna be above 450. It's gonna be somewhere in there, and you're gonna be able to plop that. And Barbara's really good, y'all, at decorative soldering. So I'm gonna let her finish the answer to that question. You want to turn your iron on the side, so you're just working for on the tip. On that, of your uh, soldering on that iron. very so you turn tip it to the side, so you're working on the side. Yeah, and that that'll help you, Julie. Control small, that temperature. A smaller tip is easier. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, and, and you know controlling what? Controlling your temperature. I tell you what has a small tip, Barb, for that for decorative soldering. The Heiko. The Heiko. Mm -hmm. We got one in the mail right before we left for the holidays. Oh, I got to write that. And uh, we're going to be doing. We're not only going to be checking it out, but we're going to be explaining to you and giving you what we like and dislike about the Heiko iron. 
So from what I've seen in the package, I like the tip, but I'm curious about the rheostat on it, and we're going to check the temperature on that with Artie's birthday present. So Yeah. We're going to see how close it is to the dial. I think it's going to work. The Heiko is going to work better for uh, soldering copper foil, I think. Oh, yeah, than lead, yeah. And it says it's universal, but I, I, looking at that tip, okay, and Barbara and I both looked at one another, and we said, ooh, copper foil. Yeah. And decorative soldering. I think it's really going to be good for decorative soldering, Barb. I think so. Because that tip is only like, I don't know, three sixteenths or something? Yeah. The one that came with that Heiko... Six, a Heiko 601 is what we got, right? Julie said, thank goodness for her rheostat. Yeah. Oh, Julie, thank you. You're too kind, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the rheostat. <laughs> the rheostat. <laughs> okay. You know, that's really... I have really... some more questions, Kate. Okay, Barb, let's okay. go. Okay, so we don't want to miss anybody's questions no, here. No, we don't, really. Okay, a white marker paint pen. Well, that's exactly what it is. We're, what is are we? It a, the white marker is a paint pen. And where do you buy it? It's a paint pen, and it's a. Um, you office supply stores have them. Um, they do. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we have it on our shopping page uh, at Conway Glass, but if not, we'll we'll see if we can't find them. And, I'm, and they're probably going to be in packs of two, and they're only like less than six dollars, probably. So and that's for marking your color glass. And that's for you marking don't. your your darker glasses with your pattern because you know a black marker doesn't work on all the colors so we prefer either we Barbara and I either use white or gold paint pens and they are medium tip or fine tip because it's much easier to work with so that's right yeah and you can take it off with like lacquer thinner or you know whatever you need to do so but it's Kathy, much easier to see black glass <laughs> or sure to cut is. black glass. That's right. Kathy Cat has a question. Okay. Uh, she heard that if you use black back foil, you have to use black patina. So what are all the foil differences about? Please help. All right. Well, you don't have to use any patina if you use black back foil. Black back foil is designed for hiding and making shadows on clear glass because there's nothing worse than looking through it and seeing the back of a copper piece when it's already soldered and you put black patina on it. Well, if so you the, use black back foil though, you're going to want to patina it black. Well, then you're going to have silver solder and black. You're going to see the black. Not if you if you foil your glass correctly and it's not hanging over and done, if it's done correctly and you got the exact the same amount of foil on both sides of the glass. The, the whole thing about the black back foil, y'all, actually was designed for mirror because it creates a shadow around the edge of the mirror when you're doing boxes so that you don't see anything. So, yeah, you can use black back foil. You can, I don't re recommend you use copper back foil on any type of clear glass, you know, like clear textured glass because you're going to see the copper. I like the black. I prefer the black because it creates a shadow. So that's just me. Okay, well, That's I personally prefer to match my patina to the color of the backing on my foil. So if I use a copper foil, I would do a copper patina. If I use a black back foil, I would use black patina. And, um, you know, silver, you silver back. That's just what I would do because yeah. my foiling isn't perfect. Well, if it is, and, though... Uh, uh, his is probably no much mine's more not probably not perfect either i don't know that anybody can perfectly foil every single time but that's but what i will tell you this about. the adhesive on the back of black back foil is much greater than on any other foil that they make and i that's don't know right. why that's right so that's another reason actually the main reason i prefer to use the black back foil is because the adhesive is much more intense than the rest of the foils Mm -hmm. And it won't come off. It doesn't make a difference if you're using opaque glass, what color the yeah, back of the foil is. Right. It only makes a difference if you have that. Um, Clear glass or you're working with mirror, either way, right? right. Silver back. Yeah. Silver right. back you can use on mirror or black back. Okay, Mimi said we're cute. What? I think that was before we had the that was, that was before discussion what? about the Oh, the copper foil doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I'm the lead guy. Okay. Jen, <laughs> Jen wants to know, did you give anyone stained glass gifts for the holidays? 
Um, in, in two months, uh, Jen made 11 projects. My parents loved the lamp, but my dad put the shade on his head and scared me like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, Barbara um, likes to stack things of ours that we make and then back up and take the picture before it falls. But it's never fallen. And she knows that it just makes my blood pressure go up when I see everything stacked up and it's not held together. I, I do it when he's not there. He uh, only gets his blood I, pressure she, up when I show him the picture. Yeah, and I'm like, what? <laughs> but yes, yeah, we did fine. give glass. But not stained glass. But not stained glass. We did give glass to uh, a lot we gave of them our family, yes. Ornaments. We gave them ornaments on the TV right here. That's fine. Yeah. And if you see the little stained glass window that's off of Barbara's shoulder right there, that's a window that Barbara and I built 25 what? years ago. What? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's right there beside the stop the traffic light. So. All right. We built What's that a very on? long, long time ago. Oh, it's not there anymore. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> All it's right. all good. It timed out, so we're gonna untime it. There okay, we go. There we go. Thank you. Our producer is really on everything. Yeah. Y'all. It's it's greatly appreciated. I can't read sign language yet, but I know when something's I can't either. wrong. Okay. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. And if this is helping you, That's please right. subscribe if you're not already. And subscribed. if you do subscribe, go ahead and go to the top and ring that bell that notification <laughs> bell that tells you every time we're on the air whether we're in town or out because you, oh barb it's incredible <laughs> this is such a, a beautiful studio to have our show in tonight you know it's like 28 degrees outside and we're here and we have all of our peeps with us and thank you all so much yeah, for tuning thank in you tonight. everyone for showing up tonight all and right. supporting our channel and everything that you do we yeah. do really appreciate it yeah okay ed can you demonstrate curling wire becky wants to curling wire you know what i could but we are out of town and and i don't, don't have, have any wire, wire right with me here. but we will come back next week and yeah we'll do we'll the be, we'll, we'll show be you back how in to... our studio and we'll have some wire handy yeah you sure you don't have wire? i don't have any wire okay. in right. handy i don't okay actually uh it's at the house because i was i was making uh hooks for our christmas ornaments Okay, what's an easy way TBM? I don't know what uh, that is. Easy means. way what? Who said that? T-O-B-M. Curling like tack across a finished piece for decoration. Okay, yeah, we'll show that. Okay. Yes. Next week, we it won't that. be this week. We yeah, don't it have won't be more. this week. be next Monday night. Now, next Monday night is viewer showcase, too. Sunshine Every Studio is snowed in. Sunshine, yeah, they. Uh, I got a message from them Friday while we were traveling, and um, yeah, <laughs> they just said we just can't do it. It's too crazy. So they got you know that lake effect snow, and there in Buffalo is incredibly nasty sometimes. So okay, yeah, Becky said she'd come back. Okay, you do the wire thing. Yeah, I'll be wire. happy to. And please come back and stick with us. Don't just leave. Yeah, don't leave. Don't and if leave. you have a question, put it in the chat. We'll be happy to. All answer. right. Rick's got a question for us, Barb. Okay. He's building a project with seven glass beads chained together. The joints are unstable and foil keeps falling off. I think I need to wrap with wire. Do I wire? Do I wrap each bead or wrap the entire chain? I would, I would, um, you're probably going to need to wrap. Each in, no, don't do individual because if they're all tied together, what you want to do is start in the center of a bead and come out and around and go in and out and follow that diameter like that all the way around and then come back around and do the same thing from underneath and tie it all together. Does and that you make just, sense? Yeah, I hope that makes sense to you, uh, Rick. So, so just start out with the wire in between two beads and, and bring it out and wrap it around it in with a V on the wire, around, over, in with a V and go all the way around, come back up and do the same V from underneath and, and then tie it all in back to the first bead. Okay, and you said that the foil keeps falling off, so that might be something with the pulling. Well, that might be, or you might have to use a little bit... Uh, uh, is it a bead or a nugget? Can you type that back? Because if it's a nugget, you're going to need to use quarter inch foil instead of 732nds. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you're gonna if you're gonna use a nugget, uh, nuggets are usually about three eighths of an inch thick. So you want to make sure that you you have enough to bite on it. And a lot of times the smaller foil isn't gonna work around a nugget, right, Rick? So uh, just kind of you know yeah, think about that. And if you have to, you can always wire. you can I mean, always the cut the foil off the foil. back of that of that bead of, of that you know that nugget or whatever it is that you're using, Rick. So a lot of times that well, that will happen. Uh, Julie wants to know when you buy lead cane that is packaged wound in a circle, what is the best way to unravel so it does not twist? Just roll it out, okay? Because it shouldn't be twisted when they roll it. This is what they call hobby cane. So they're gonna you're or gonna sometimes in the spool. Well, now the spool is like, oh my gosh! If you can buy a fifty pound box rather than a twenty five pound spool, you are so much better off. The spools are just really crazy to work with. And we, we really finally had to quit buying them because we were throwing more away than we were using. But apparently when they send the lead, instead of sending it straight out, like we buy it. Right. When they're rolling it, they just roll it. They just wind it in a circle. And she wants to know about unwinding. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If uh -huh. you take Thank a you. circle and it's, it's wound up, turn it on its side and just roll it over. And right. then you still have to stretch it, though. You still have to stretch your uh, lead, your hobby cane that comes in that little spool, like little roll thing. Yeah, and then you can take your, you can lay it out and take your fit and just kind of straighten it. Yeah, yeah. Before well, you stretch it. Right, and when you stretch it, it'll a lot straighten. of it, a lot of times it'll unwind itself if you kind of help it before you stretch it. But right? if you'll take your fit and just, you know, straighten it, and then stretch it. Right? Am I right? Like she said. Like Straighten I said. it and stretch Straighten it. Straighten it and stretch it. That's right. Straighten it and stretch it. Yeah, the thing about it, ideally, and I, and I know it's expensive, ideally is to buy it by the case, mm -hmm. the 50-pound box. It's straight, and all you have to do is stretch it. And, you know, time is money. So think about that. How much time are you spending undoing your lead and rolling it out and doing all that as opposed to popping the box open, sliding a piece out, stretching it, and going to work? Just something to think about. Yeah, so you always have it readily available. Yeah, and right now, you know, a 50-pound box of lead is somewhere right around $300. But a 50-pound box of lead is almost, depending on the size, some of the boxes of lead have 100 pieces in them. So think about that. And if you're using that hobby came size, uh, and you can even buy the boxes and use, you know, around, for, around the outside edges of stuff. But you're going to pay about three hundred dollars a box with freight now, right now, so it's pretty expensive. So okay, Rick said that it is a nugget. Okay. And Julie, no, who was it that said? Oh, Cat St. Jane said, grind the edges on the nugget. Yeah. That, and that'll help your foil to stick. Yeah, That's because it, well, to grind the nugget, period, will help your foil stick. But mm -hmm. if you if you stand it up and grind the edges and kind of thin it down a little bit, almost like a small bevel. You will definitely, yeah. So that's there's a there's a whole different way of looking at things. Once Barb and I, or if you know, like Julie said, to tell us what it is you're using, because there's a lot of different ways to uh, to operate that, you know, whatever it is you're using. Whether you're using a nugget, you're using a jewel, you're using, you know, a rondelle. There's a lot of different ways you have to approach it in order to make it work. But the, if you're using nuggets, they definitely have to be ground. There's no, you know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So. Yeah. Um, Ed is asking, can you explain how to use reinforcement copper strips and when you would need to use it? Uh, yeah, well, reinforcing copper strips, I would say, are going to need to be, if you're using the copper foil, if you have a long horizontal piece going across the window... What that what does that do? That makes the window weak. It makes it want to fold in half. So running just a re and keep in mind with your design, running just a restrip across that isn't going to stop the window from folding up. So when you're designing those windows, you want equal vertical and horizontal lines so that you're making almost like a cage, but it's within the design. Because remember, your restrip, you can use your restrip all the way around all those inside, you know. Yeah. You can put it in there. If you put it in your design, cutting it and dropping it in doesn't do it any good because now it's pieced. The idea would be to run it 
run it vertically and kind of horizontally through the whole piece so that the window is not weakened this way. And then, of course, either put it in a, in a zinc frame or put it in a wooden frame, and then you, that's another reason that you, you can sleep at night because you don't have to worry about it falling apart. And Julie said she did, um, <clears throat> she did. Sorry. <laughs> the table moved. Um, she did stretch it, but she thinks she needs to fit it. Yeah, I would fit it because a lot of times, too, what happens, Julie, is that um, when they're rolling it up and it's rolling inside of each other, if you notice, like one side of the lead is on in the center of the next piece of lead and it rolls around because when it comes to you rolled up, in that in that little roll it comes to you almost kind of like a cone just a little tiny bit of a cone and that's one one six foot piece of lead so yeah you'll want to stretch it and fit it and make sure that you know so that you can work with it but if you can again julie if, if you could swing a case of lead or or split a case of lead with someone um that's ideally or come to the shop and we can sell you the six foot pieces stretch you know not stretched out but flat and and i have a box that i can put it in you can take it home with you okay jen has a question when is a good time to use hobby came how do you know which to use and when either hobby came or you channel came well hobby came typically is for in between everything and you channel came is for the outside edges of everything so uh, you can use hobby came to put stuff together you know, small birds and things like that. If and I would use the eighth inch or the, what they call the, or the five thirty second H round H lead. If hobby came, that's hobby came. Anything smaller than three sixteenths is pretty mm -hmm. much hobby came. So you're going to use a five thirty second or a one eighth hobby came in the center, putting your pieces together. But the outside edge is you reserve that outside edge for your U shapes. Okay. You use a you know three sixteenth U, quarter inch U, even an eighth inch U. Again, they're all hobby U's. Okay, most people don't U in a large window don't use U leads around the outside. You use an H or you use um, you know the the zinc. I prefer to use an H lead, but you can use the hobby cane for really small stuff. You know, Barbara had a great aunt that was really good at, uh, at stained glass. Remember she used to use the hobby and she cane used the hobby cane, all the, all the flowers, cane. everything she made, she used hobby cane. So, okay. So, and then, you know, you can take the U shaped lead and put it around each piece and then solder everything together. But what you find when you do that is you get, if, if you're not real careful with your solder, you get a bunch of big blobby blobs and then it doesn't really look attractive. Okay, so do we want to uh, do a uh, glass chat or? I guess. What's everybody up for? Glass you're, chat? you're welcome, let's Ed. Let's do glass chat. You want to do glass chat? Yeah, let's do glass chat first. All right. Okay. So, uh, hey, everybody, it's glass chat. It's glass chat. Do you need a close up or no? Uh, yes. No, let's give a full screen of this first and then we'll do a close up. Okay. Because I want to share this with everybody, okay? And the reason I want to share this with you is because it's, and I may have shared this before, but I didn't share this piece. I want you to see the difference. This is a Kokomo, everybody. It's a Kokomo opalescent, and the part number is part number 70, okay? It's a Kokomo opalescent 70. This is the front. Now, let me flip this over. It. Hang on to your hats, everybody. I just, and if I do this. It looks like a scene. Well, I was going to say, if I, if I do this, watch. Oh, it's a cloudy sky, and this is the ocean. This it is the like storm. A, yeah. It's so beautiful. So anyway, here's the thing about art glass, and we all know this. Use your art glass to your advantage. It's made like this for a reason. And this, this piece of glass is talking to me, y'all. I see a box coming up for this. I see a box coming up for this. I really do. I, and this is, it's just such a beautiful glass. So I wanted to share this with you. Kokomo number 70, everybody. This is a uh, 16 by 20. And it'll run you about $36. And Sunshine Glassworks has that glass. It's correct? in stock, yeah, because I just got seven pieces of it. Okay. And uh, so, hey, that's a beautiful glass by Kokomo. And of course, you know, Wismac, they make beautiful glass. And 
um, Bullseye, all those manufacturers here in this country make beautiful glass, and they're all annealed correctly, so you don't have problems with them. That's anyway, right. that's just my spiel. And they're but I love our American Sunshine manufacturers, Works. and they're available at Sunshine Glassworks. That's right. And thanks again, Sunshine, for sponsoring this show and being such great customer service people. But they're snowed in. And they're snowed in. <laughs> But they should be they should be dug yeah, out by the that's end good. of the week. Well, by the time Sean up. gets back to work, he's on vacation anyway. So by oh, the time okay. Sean gets back to work, the snow might be gone. <laughs> I don't okay. know. I don't know. So hey, everybody, I got a, this cute little flower I'm going to cut up for you tonight. We're just going to do it really quick. We're going to hold our breath and see if any of this comes out correctly, like it's supposed to. Okay. And uh, so I have a I have a simple piece of just blue glass bar. This is a blue glass. This is actually a Wismag, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't have a part number on it. I've taken, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a, well you see the flower petals here. I've cut them out, out of my pattern paper. I've taken, I've put, there you go. I have put the pattern onto my blue glass, just like this. I have my trusty glass cutter. I've got my short running pliers. Oh, and speaking of short running pliers, everybody, right after the first of the year, they are back in inventory. As soon as we get back to the shop, we'll put them back in inventory and because uh, they are on, our, on their way to us as we speak. So the little six and a half inch running pliers that everybody likes, we got them again. So. Okay, and they'll be available at the first of the year. Uh, right, January, January 5th, right? When are they coming in? They'll be there by the 5th. Yeah. Okay, they'll be there by the 5th. But there, I think there's one pair in stock. Yeah, we have a pair in inventory if you want them. You know, late Christmas gift for that loved one that you have. <laughs> but so anyway. They'll be available right. soon. So this is a little bit of water that I spilled, but it's no big deal. Ruined okay. the tape, yeah. I ruined this piece of uh, birch plywood. Not really. Not really. So here we go. I've marked our pattern on our glass. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to whittle this down. You know how I like to do that. I don't mind wasting a little bit of glass, but I am not going to give uh, give so much, you know, not waste enough of it that everything's so close together that I can't get my work out. Can you show that, lift that up and show them the pattern? Can yeah, you see I, the pattern? Already, oh, I there they it. go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just one. I did, right there. Sorry. So I'm going to show you again that I have my pattern marked on my glass. It's all good. It looks good. It looks good. It's, you see how close it is, but how far apart they really are. Think about that. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, one score. Here we go. Listen to your cutter. There was a bop in there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to come across right here. We're going to eliminate, move these two pieces out of the way. Ready? Here we go. Now I'm not cutting anything. I am just separating the parts. All right. So our next cut, everybody, we're going to separate number three. You can see that. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I got a little bit of a glare, but that's okay. So I, th I think if you move it over to the the right. Oh, there. It looks good there. Yeah, yeah. that's better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to separate this right here. You heard it pop, and we're going to turn it around because that curve's a little intense for the running plier, but there it is right there. All right. So here we go. Remember, cutter wheel on the inside of that black line. We're using our grousers, and we're using our runners. So we take off the parts that we can run first like that and then we'll take our grousers because we want to make sure we're going to get this little curve now it's going to break right here I, and there's nothing i can do about it but i only left myself a little bit of room so we're going to we're going to ask the grinder to clean that up for us okay so i'm trying to avoid getting a lot of glass everywhere okay so there's number three everybody we're going to put that we'll just put that on the pattern okay just like that now, now we're down to the pieces where we have two pieces on each piece of glass. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, just like that. 
another cut. And remember, you want to listen to your glass cutter. And when you drive down into a divot, just drive right back out. Don't pick up on your glass cutter. The very second you pick up on your glass cutter, your score is ruined, okay? Because you're never going to start back where it, where it used to be, okay? So we're going to take this. We're going to pop this off. Boom. Boom. And boom. All right, so there's number one, everybody. Okay. Now, our next number that we're cutting out, I'm trying to do this relatively fast, but I want you to see what this flower looks like. And y'all really should work with your glass because it's so, your glass is so beautiful. Turn the pattern to make the glass do what you want it to do because it's like, you know, it's pretty intense color here. Just like that. So what happens, y'all, you see these little these little pieces that'll break off when I touch it with the running pliers. The reason that it's breaking off is because there's not enough space there. There's not enough space there for, uh, you know, like for the curve to go around and I'm putting too much, a little bit too much pressure on it. And so, but here we go. These are our last two pieces, number two and number four. Okay. And before you know it, y'all, we're going to have a, a, we're going to have a flower. Okay, so we're going to split that again. Let's use our running pliers, everybody. Boom. Let's get number two out of the way. We're score once. Ray, you're probably, y'all. well, actually, all of y'all are really good at cutting these small pieces. Ray, you'd like to build lamps. You're like the lamp maestro there. So uh, these pieces are probably nothing for you to cut. Okay. So we take a little bit of that, boom, okay. And we're gonna get number four and we're gonna knock it out. Here we go, number four. So what I've done, talking about nuggets tonight, I put a blue nugget in the center of my blue flower and I just wanted y'all to see this. So, But keep in mind, your running pliers aren't gonna break every little thing because they're not they're not they're just not going to do it but if you use your grouse and pliers put your finger underneath pull down remember pull pull down and away um, because the first time that you you pull down and you stab yourself in the knuckle you're going to remember that oh that's right it said pull down and away and it, it's all it's all good because Let's do this, get this out of the way. So y'all, that, that took, I don't know, I don't know how much time it was, but I hope that it was time well spent for, for you because it was time well spent for me because I got a flower out of the deal and you guys, I hope, learned a little bit more about, you know, I know you don't want to waste glass, but give yourself enough room to work without messing everything up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I have a question that sure. is right to the point, right? You were just talking about when you trace the pattern onto the glass, why didn't you put the pattern pieces closer together? Is it because you wanted certain areas of the glass for the look? No, not at all. Not even a little bit. <clears throat> the reason I didn't put the pieces closer together is because I didn't want to have to deal with what that one piece breaking while I'm trying to get another piece out. I leave myself about a half inch and I split the line and then I cut the pieces. It's much easier that way. And usually everything comes out like it's supposed to. So yeah. So let's look at that again. Cause there's another question, uh, having to do with this type of glass cutting. Do you always grind every piece regardless of the cut? If you do a perfect cut, do they need to grind it? Oh, a perfect cut. I got you. No, here's the thing. You should grind. If you're doing copper foil, you need to at least grind the edges, whether it's a perfect cut or not, because you're going to find that your copper foil will stick to it much easier if you rough up the edges. It's not whether you cut it perfectly or not. Uh, if you're using lead, you don't have to grind anything And if you do perfect cuts. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's great. Well, that, you're still going to have that little flare on the. It doesn't. You yeah, may when not you pull really down, see it, 
and it's going to be a little bit sharp so it's going to kind of cut through your copper foil tape there it is right there barn yeah so what you want to do is just quickly go grind just, it just take that little done. flare off of there and, and it done. should fit your pattern perfectly yeah it should fit your pattern you know, you don't want to spend any time on the grinder. Just quickly grind that in. Yeah, all you want to do is rough it up and get rid of it. See, what, what the grinder does, y'all, and I think I've explained this to you before, But and look at the glass next time you break a piece of glass with your running pliers or your grousing pliers, but the glass breaks on an angle, okay? And let me tell you what your grinder does. Not only does it shape the glass for you if you're not cutting your glass perfect, but... What it does is it takes that edge, okay, that flare, that not perfectly 90 degree edge and squares it up so that when you butt two pieces of glass together, they don't look like this. They look like they're supposed to. They look like that instead of like that, okay? Because that flare on the bottom, when you kiss up to another piece of glass, that flare is going to keep it away either on the top or the bottom it doesn't matter wherever the flare is and it shouldn't be there so use your grinder to make the edge of the glass perfectly 90 degrees so that when you butt your two pieces of glass together if they're cut correctly then they line up and your solder joint looks perfect okay right thank you ed yes did i, did I answer that too much no that was perfect okay uh rick day asks uh, he wants to use an epoxy resin on a copper foil project. If he does that, will it affect the foil or the solder? You know, I don't know about, I, I don't know, but if you're just going to, if you're just going to uh, just epoxy something to the window, it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect it, you know? So I don't know where you're putting the epoxy resin, Rick. Um but you know what? I, if if you're concerned about it, because I I haven't done anything like that. I've I've applied pieces to windows, but uh, not soldered not, them or not, foiled them or anything. Yeah, not like that. Just yeah, so raw to the just to raw the glass, right to the glass, to the glass, you know, and then epoxy resin. So, so tr do a sample. Yeah, do a sample. Right, uh, that would be the, Rick. That would be the way that I would say to do it. Would be to um to do a sample and and see what it does because yeah. you know the fumes from some epoxies will just make you make you tear up and cry you know and if you get it on your skin good gosh hang on to your hat and not good to breathe either. right sure and make sure you're in a well ventilated area mm -hmm. with epoxies anyway because they're usually two parts some of them are even three parts so. okay carol has a question if you use a ring saw to cut out complex shapes do you still need to grind or does the ring saw do that as well? Uh, and when, when you, after you use your ring saw, look at the edge of the glass. You're right. It's, guess what's on the surface? It has brought it back up to sand. So no, you don't need to regrind it, but you do need to clean it thoroughly before the copper foil will stick. So the ring saw does the grinding for you because what? The ring saw runs perfectly vertical. It doesn't run at an angle. So your glass is perfectly vertical. And so when you stick two pieces together that are supposed to fit together, guess what? They don't have a flare on them, so they're going to stick together. Um, you know, they're going to fit together just like they're supposed to. So, yeah, no, don't grind it with unless you need to take a little piece out that you missed with the ring saw or didn't cut it correctly. Then you would use your grinder for that. But if you're using a ring saw, I'm guessing your glass pieces should fit together. And so... Those of you that use a ring saw, what is your experience? Do you usually have to grind? I would think you, you're so perfect on the pattern, you wouldn't want to Yeah, grind as it, long right? as you're cutting right to where you need to be. And, you know, the ring saw is great. And, uh, and uh, actually, we'll be, doing, we'll be telling y'all what we think about a ring saw because Ed's never had one, but I got one coming. And it'll be here uh, after we get back after the first of the year. So, Okay, I had another question. What is the difference between 90 and 96? Um, about you know, six and then it, compatibility and the uh, what is the difference in them what is the difference it's the compatibility it's the compatibility it's a coefficient of expansion and contraction which is the COE of your glass so yeah somebody makes a 90 or well, they didn't want to be like everybody else so they decided they were going to make a 96 and it's okay Wismac, most of Wismac's glasses are all 90 
uh, Euroboros is 90. Um, Bullseye is floats back and forth. It's actually like 93.6. And um, 96, who's got 96, Barb? I don't know. I don't know either. You know, Spectrum, Oceanside used to have, well, they probably still have 96. Let's just say Oceanside doesn't have a compatible glass. Okay, so the 90, you, if you... Thank you, Rick. We appreciate that. Oh, you hey, man, you're, you're amazing. amazing. Hold on, you're here amazing. we go. <laughs> Woo! You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So the... Um, so compatibility. Yeah. Uh, if you want to use 90, and this is just for fusing or glass blowing. Right. You use 90, you use everything 90. If you use a 96, you have to make sure everything you use is 96. Right. Like like you can't you can't take some 96 glass and go out and buy some millefiores that are 104 coefficiency because what's going to happen is as soon as you're done, the glass is going to blow up because it's under so much stress. They're pulling against one another. The coefficient of expansion and contraction is that everything cools and heats at the same rate. It expands and it contracts and there's nothing pulling at it. It's all doing it together as a team. Right? Yep. So whether you use 90, 96, 104, use all the same of 90, 96, or 104. Yeah, everything has to be you know. the same. But it doesn't matter if you're doing stained glass. No, it, it doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with that. that. Stained glass is flat glass, and it's technically cold glass, so you don't really need to worry about it. And uh, that's, you know, that's really a good question, Barb, because a lot of people are say, well, I don't know if I want to use 90 uh, and, and use 150 in your stained glass window because they're not sticking good. together. Yeah. And they're not pulling apart. They're not pulling at each other. And having a wrestling match. Okay, Richard Fox has a really good question. Have you ever lost the scoring sound while making a cut across a sheet of glass? Can you go back and try to rescore again? Oh! In the section where you lost the sound. Okay, and this is where you learn about glass. This so is, do we have a good? Uh, well, we do. We do. I have a. I have a, a good glass here that right, you. Right. Yeah. So here's the thing, Richard. That is a great question. Okay, and. We have several videos, but my thing is, is you listen to your glass cutter and Richard, you never change the pressure and no, you do not go back and go over top of it. If you go over top of it, you're, you're done. Just throw it away because it's, it's not going to do it. What you're going to run into, the reason you don't hear your score sometimes and you do other times on different, on glass, on the same piece of glass is because some colors are hard and some colors are soft. And if you're cutting opaque glasses, you're going to find that you're going to hear the cutter sometimes and you're not going to hear it. And it's a mixture of different glasses. Yeah, so hey, let's just, I don't, I don't know that, but here's the thing. This glass right here, and I'm going to cut a strip of it off because I got a feeling we're going to not hear something as we go across. So we'll be able to tell the dense glass. Yeah. This blue is really soft right here. You see this really pretty light blue where my finger is? That's really soft. This also, this blue has purple in it. And purple's a soft color. Green's a soft color. But I'm guessing... There might be white in it. There might... I don't see I don't see know. Any. I don't see any. But if you look at the edge of your glass, all of those colors are stacked up in there. And let's see what... Let's just see what this sounds like, Barb. You know... All we're going to do is put it back on the motor home. So let's see what happens. Here we okay, go. Okay, go for it. So, okay, so I want you do to... Do we want to do on the close-up? Let's do a close-up because we want to we want to listen to our cutter, everybody. Listen to your cutter. I'm going to cut a strip of this, and then we're going to cut this very dense Kokomo glass here. And this is a solid color, but I know we're not going to hear our cutter on this one. So here we go. You ready? We're pushing because we're scoring, a, not necessarily a pattern, but you all know what? Ed forgot his straight edge, and we're just going to try it. So here we go. Ready? So right away, there's a divot right here. So we're going to jump right in that hole. Here we go. Same pressure, start to finish. Same pressure. I didn't hear nothing down here. Okay. I think the blue is... 
the blue's kind of dense. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. So I'm going to turn it around. We're going to run our running pliers from the end we finished from. Okay. And now we got to turn this around. And our run, our score is right to here. Our run, and we're going to pull down and away. Okay. So we got that out of the way. And we did, yes, we heard our cutter, but we didn't hear it for a short period of time there. And yeah, now, when it went through that blue, right? Yeah, when it when it went through the blue in the beginning. Oh, well, let's try this again, Barb. Let's see what happens. Before we cut this piece of green. So I'm gonna go from what I heard at the at the top to what I didn't hear at the bottom. You ready? Here we go. Yes. Nothing at the last two inches of this piece of glass. There was nothing there, but I did not I did not change the pressure on my cutter in my hand because That's not any good. So there you have it There's that now. Let's try this piece of green and let's see uh, Richard if we hear this. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I didn't hear a thing. I don't know about y'all, but here's the deal. It still breaks. So you want to make sure this is this is a Kokomo glass. This, I don't have a part number uh, because it was just in my shoe box. And so here we go. Here we go again. Listen. Nothing. Nothing at all. But please, when you're cutting, listen to your glass cutter. Don't go over top of a score a second time. Once is plenty. All, when you're cutting glass, everybody, you can go back to the other camera, huh? please. So when you're cutting glass, everybody, what you're doing is you're separating the, your glass cutter, your cutter wheel, is separating the molecules on the surface of the glass. And wherever you separate those molecules is where the glass is going to follow that particular score, okay? If you go over top of it the second time, it, the score's ruined and you're not gonna get it to break. Cause I have people bring stuff to me all the time. So, well, I tried to cut this and then I was, I, I went over it again and again and it still wouldn't cut. Well, no kidding. <laughs> Cause it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And more than anything, what it does when you run over another, your score like, like that would be, you could put a chip in your wheel and now you're gonna try and figure out what's wrong with your cutting because your wheel has a small chip in it. So anyway, my recommendation, no, Richard, please don't go over top of it. Some glasses are denser than others. Keep in mind, use the same pressure, whether it's a dense glass or not, and make it, you can't, you can't hear it. You just can't hear it. Now, do you think that's because of the white in it? Because it has so much white in it. It or could it... be this has white is white, y'all is very dense. Now, I, I have a quiet, piece of peach right? here. Oh, white is quiet. White scares you. It's so quiet. <laughs> this has got some stuff on it, a drawing. But I, this is a peach colored <laughs> glass, and it's okay. So let's let's just try it. Let's see what the peach sounds like. This is a very dense glass too. This is a Kokomo. Yeah. Nothing. It's very dense. Same pressure. Okay, same pressure as, um, as we're cutting the blue. Listen to the blue, listen how soft this is. It's, it's just soft. But this green, y'all, you may or you may not hear it, but guess what? It breaks really nice. This is a beautiful green, isn't it? Look at the light behind that. Woo, that's pretty. So anyway, I hope that answers your question, Richard, but please, yeah, don't go over your score. Score at one time. Listen to your cutter. Everything's good. Just don't change the pressure in your hand. Remember, you have to listen to your cutter, and if you listen to your cutter, your cutter will tell you what's going on with the glass. So get ready. Okay. Um, Deborah wants to know, is there a video on how they actually make Glass. Sure, you can go to Kokomo, um, Kokomo, uh, Kokomo Opal Lessent Glass 
on their website and they have how they're making it. And WizMac also has how they make it. And Bullseye has some really good videos of how they mix color yeah. and roll the sheets out. So yeah, if you're interested in that, now we're talking hot glass and we're rolling it out, mixing colors by use of a ladle out of a furnace you know, mixing two, three, four colors. And you know what? The guys that carry the ladles with the color in them are exceptional people. But the guy that mixes it is what you get, and he's talented. Because he know, you know what I'm saying? It's just, when you're mixing those colors together, you really, you really need to know what you're doing. The other thing is, when you're mixing the colors together, is your, the paddle that you're using to mix it, can't go through to the other side because then it ruins the underside of the glass when it rolls it out. So think about that. It's so, a very delicate so they, job. Yeah, they create specific recipes, ladle of this, a half a ladle of that, and they right. make it. And the ladle outside. goes in a very specific place on the sheet. Yeah. And so then it's really it's interesting. Pulled, oh, you look it, it's up. fascinating. Yes, it's fascinating. And I mean, you can even watch, uh, you can go to uh, PPG and watch how float glass is made too, flat glass, like tabletop glass, window panes, things like that. So. Is this, uh, Becky wants to know, is the softer glass any more sensitive to iron heat? No, it's not. It's not. The only thing that, that's sensitive to the iron heat, of course, would be uh, you. And you, if you're using a rheostat, you really don't have to worry about um, breaking your glass unless you're like hanging out spending spending a lot of time in that one specific area so and Richard you know what thank you for tuning in tonight and thanks for that question we appreciate it uh, Richard wants to know how do you know uh, when it's time to change your cutter wheel um, this cutter wheel on, on my glass cutter this is 20 years so okay. here's the thing keep it don't drop it on the floor I keep mine in my pocket, but I'm, you know, I do this like all the time, every day. So, I, you know, I keep three three things on me every day: a pencil, a pocket knife, and my glass cutter, and a tape measure. So, how things. do you know when it's time to change your cutter wheel? I don't know that that you do. Um, again, this cutter wheel is 20 years old, and so <clears throat> when it doesn't cut glass anymore. Yeah, but this one <laughs> this one cuts anything. You you might hear a. Um, you could hear a you you could hear a you could hear a a bump 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 and then it's time to change the wheel because yeah. you got a flat spot in it and when those score when your score isn't solid separating the molecules if it has a like a flat tire on it you know what I mean then it's time to change your cutter wheel yeah if you drop it on the floor he so the, head first it's gonna and the no. best thing to do is take a clear Richard take a clear piece of window glass and this is just not for Richard this is for everybody. Take a clear piece of window glass. We know it's the softest glass there is. And take your glass cutter and start at the top and pull it to you. And look at the score and see if it's got a flat spot in it because you'll be able to tell, okay? Yeah. You'll definitely on, on be, able glass, you'll yep. be able on to tell. Yeah, on window glass, you'll be able to tell. On the opalescent glass like this, you can't tell. But if you do it on window glass and use your regular pressure, Richard, and everybody else, use your regular pressure, start to finish. If it goes, get rid of it. Don't throw the whole cutter away. Just get a new wheel. They're like $26. Joan wants to know what is your favorite glass to cut? Mm, art glass. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My favorite glass to cut is actually um, the G&As or the German New Antiques. I, I find that... Uh, because they are mouth blown glasses and they are annealed correctly, you can get just about any shape out of them because they're just a little bit thinner too. They're more like three thirty seconds rather than an eighth of an inch. And but I love working with the G and A's or the what they call the new antiques, and that that's what I like. I like working with those. Susan B wants us to tell people about the wheel that will improve the cutting. The wheel that'll improve the cutting. Cleaning it. Oh, the yeah. cleaning of it. Okay, that's good. About cleaning that's around real the good. wheel. Well, I, you know what? Y'all are in good shape because my wheel is filthy. Oh, you got something to clean and it I with? And I got to figure out if I've got something to clean it with. I need like a straight pin or something. Let me look in my jacket. I got a flag on. Let's try that. Hold on. 
I don't know if this is narrow enough first. Let wait, me wait, try wait, 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 wait. it. Hang on. No, it's not narrow enough. I need like a straight pin or a... Or a something really, really narrow. Is that narrow? Yeah, something really narrow. So I, it won't go in there. It needs to go in between that cutter V right there. So, uh, oh, a, st a staple, a brad from a staple gun or something. Anyway, so let me just show it to you. Um, and you want to do the close-up and I can show them where to, where to clean. Toothpick? Toothpick? I don't know. Uh-oh, don't. So what you want to do is you, do, yep, there we go. We're in, guys. Here we go. We're going to clean my cutter head. Okay, I'm going to do a close-up real We're quick. We're going to clean the cutter head. Here we go. Okay, so so during your time, glass comes out of the box from the manufacturer. It's got what they call desiccant on it, which is like a gel of little tiny beads. When you pull a piece of glass out of the retailer's shop, you're going to have dust and everything on it. So number one, of always, of course, clean your glass thoroughly before you cut before you cut it. But I want you to see the little groove there that the wheel sits in. Now, I'm going to see if I can get a little piece of white paper. Here, I'll get you. Can you get me a piece? Because mm -hmm. when I drop this, when I show you what's inside my cutter, because I can't see through it right now, so this is going to be good, Barb. It's going to be good. So when you look right here at my cutter, that, that wheel right there, there's a little groove that goes all the way through. Now, the wick, the cotton wick is right here. But I keep my glass cutter in my pocket. I'm always cutting glass, and I, I don't always remember to clean the glass that I'm working on. Okay, so I've I've got a staple here, and we're going to stick this right in be, right under the wheel. Okay, and I'm going to drop this dirt right on my piece of paper. Okay, now, y'all, two things have happened here. Hang on. Two things have happened here, and you can probably see. You see the dirt? That's dust, okay? I can see through my cutter now, under the wheel, all the way out to the camera. I can see all the way. I can see daylight through my cutter wheel. I'm going to show this to you. This is what came out of my cutter wheel. Now, if for any reason you think you need a new cutter wheel... Before you spend the $26, go get a straight pin out of the sewing box and clean that area out under the wheel and just put a little bit more, a little, a tiny bit of cutter oil on it and go on about your business. Because I got a feeling you're going to find out that the reason your cutter head isn't working is because it's full of junk, okay? And it's not going to roll correctly. And if you'll do all that and eliminate, that's a, you know, that doesn't look like a lot, but that's a very small area. That's a lot. So make sure that you clean your cutter head. It's well worth it before you spend the $26. Okay. So I hope that helps. And there is a, I guess we have a video on that, right, Barb, in our line? On cleaning the cutter, on clean it's on a live stream. It's on a live stream. We, we actually did a live stream. So check out the live streams, you know, over the last year or so and see uh, exactly... Go ahead and, and take they, the time they, to watch them and you'll probably learn. Most of the live streams have a transcript so you can kind of File yeah, scroll through it, right. Scroll through and kind of find the things that you need. Um, but yeah, so yeah. thank you, Ed. Great yeah, information toothpick tonight. Is a, Great and questions. Jan, yeah, and Jan, toothpick's a little bit big to get in there. You need that straight pin or like uh, uh, our, uh, our our host, Jason, was kind enough to get me a staple out of the staple gun and I could, we could open it and it would go through that area. So, Jason, thank you very much for doing that. And it helped our viewers and that guys is what we're here for so here we go hey we're back and i want to say thank you to simplicity in the south.com for hosting our show tonight thank Please you do. very much check out their website at simplicity in the south.com that's right and also a big thank you to sunshine glassworks for sponsoring us um they sponsor our live streams every monday night at seven o'clock yeah every monday night so thank you again sunshine and thank you again, Simplicity in the South, for your great hospitality and allowing us to use your work studio for the evening to uh, share with our viewers. 
Ed has, we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, Ed says he has a Toyo cutter and the straight pin won't go under the wheel. Something, it's, just get something smaller. Yeah, just get something smaller, Ed. And I don't know what, what that would be, but yeah, you're going to need something a little bit smaller. So I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. We appreciate you. We appreciate all the great questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. And when you subscribe, go ahead and hit the notification bell. <laughs> we're coming apart. Oh, God. Hit the notification bell so that you're warned that we're coming at you. Yeah, you need warning. <laughs> okay. Thanks again, Simplicity in the South. Thank you, Sunshine Glassworks. And thank you, viewers, from Barb and Ed. We love y'all. Happy New Year. Thank y'all.